Alrighty guys, welcome to another video, issue 36. If you wanna win a copy of this, all you gotta do is subscribe and drop a comment and you'll automatically go into the draw next week. Now, let's get straight into it. No miniatures this week, just some paints. Top up of McCrag Blue. A base paint of Steel Legion Drab. Athonian Camo Shade. So there you go, three paints this week. Pretty good. I like this Athonian camera shade because it's good for um, doing things like algae effects on stone and that kind of thing. But it's but it's a good good paint. I have never used Steel Legion Drab uh, to date, but it looks looks pretty good. So, Ultramarine's Chief Librarian Tiguris, recess shading your models and new psychic powers. Now. To find out who won last week's issue was the Primaris Chaplain, wait till the end of the video. Right, okay, what have we got? This issue comes with three paints for your growing paint collection. In the paint section, there's an article to teach you how to paint your Death Guard models with Steel Legion Drab. These are small areas and we'll go into how to paint and shade them carefully. While shading is areas, it will be easy to shade a few other small areas of detail. And so there's a second guide to help you with them. Finally, we teach you how to use your new Athonian camo shade to recess shade your Death Guard models. Recess shading is a technique you can use to bring out the details of your models without changing the overall colour of those areas. You will use this effect on Death Guard's corroded power armour to great effect. We will also include a few psychic powers in the play section for you to use in your games. Okay, so what's in the magazine? A Deadly Evolution. Learn about psychers in the Imperium of Man. Chronicles of Virulence. Add to Death Guard, Legion 5, Chief, Chief Librarian Tiguris, learn about the famed Chief Librarian of the Ultramarines, Steel Legion Drab, Death Guard Details and Recess Shading, they're all about our painting. And then, right, Faction Rules number one, and then Faction Rule number two, and then we've got a Rules Mission 20, the Ultramarines attempt to evacuate the precious gene seed, and that's called Reach the Evac Point. So that's good. Okay, a deadly evolution. Since the huge warp storms of the Age of Strife, the rate at which humans develop psychic powers is steadily increased. Psychic minds shine brightly through the warp, attracting demons, enslavers, and various other creatures that dwell within the Immaterium. The Emperor, recognising the risk that such an epidemic posed, decided to act. He banned the use of all psychic powers. Okay, interesting. This is good. He looks quite terrifying, that guy, actually. So more about that. Chronicles of Violence is all about Millennium 41. Let's have a look. Yeah, Millennium 41. Death Guard activity continues to plague the galaxy. The symptoms of their pestilent presence are felt across the Imperium. And world after world falls to sickness and decay. Mortarion observes the rot with grim relish, awaiting a new opportunity to strike. A telling blow against the hated Imperium. Now we've got Chief Librarian Tigurius. Tigurius, sorry. Tigurius is the Ultramarine Chief, Chief Librarian and has always stood apart from his battle brothers. He's a figure of mystery, possessed of knowledge that goes far beyond the towering stacks of stored data and vast collection of scrolls stored within the chapter's ancient storied librarium. That's good. So this is his war gear. He's got his banner, the hood of hellfire, the rod of Tigerius, and the librarian keys. That's good. Okay, so still legion drab. Uh, da -da -da -da. It tells us to paint it all on Lord Felfius's cape and a few other small areas. This looks pretty good. Another good detail. Um. More Death Guard details, which is good. And then recess shading with our camo shade, Athonian camo shade, which is good. Right, Librarius Discipline. Before the battle, Space Marine Psychers can swap any power on their data sheet except for Smite. One from the table below. You can roll a d6 or choose the power. Okay, so Veil of Time lets you pick an Adeptus Astartes units within 18 inches of the Psyker. And until the start of the next psychic phase, you can reroll charge rolls and advance rolls for that unit. 
and they always fight first in the fight phase, even if they didn't charge. At Might of Heroes, and you, so you select a unit within 12 inches of the Psyker. Until the start of your next phase, add one to the strength, toughness, and attacks. Psychic Scourge, so you select a visible enemy unit within 18 inches, then roll a d6 and add the Psyker's leadership to the result. Your opponent then rolls a d6 and has leadership of their unit to the result. The Psyker's total score is greater than the enemy's. The enemy unit suffers d3 mortal wounds. If it's equal, the enemy unit suffers one mortal wound. Okay, Fury of the Ancients. Then roll three d6s and select a visible enemy model. Draw an imaginary straight line between the Psyker and that model. Any enemy unit that this line, this line passes over or through suffers a mortal wound. Wow. Psychic Fortress. Select a friendly unit within 18 inches. Until the start of your next psychic phase, that unit automatically passes morale tests. And then null zone. And if manifested, then until the start of your next psychic phase, while they are within six inches of the psyker, enemy models cannot make invulnerable saves, so it must have half, but must half the result of any psychic tests rounding up that they take. Okay, so pretty good. Interesting, I like, I like the, the fact that there's six options so you can choose on a D6. Okay, then we've got some psychic power examples, uh, and it goes through the Scourge and Fury of the Ancients, which is good. We've got exactly the same for our psychers from the Nurgle side, uh, sorry, from the Death Guard side. So, Miasma of Pestilence. So, you pick a Death Guard unit, and any opponents you face must subtract one from the hit rolls that target the unit. The Gift of Contagion. So, you select an a visible enemy unit within 18 inches of the cycle and roll a d3 consult the table to this up right okay so on a d1 which is a one or two you get one attack on a two which is three or four on the dice you get minus one strength and if you get a five or six you get minus one toughness so sorry for that one or two you get minus one attack Okay, then Plague Wind, a selected visible enemy unit within 18 inches of the cycle roll one dice for each model in that unit the unit suffers one mortal wound for each roll of a d6. Sorry, for each roll of six. Blades of Putrefaction. Select a visible Death Guard unit within 18, inch 18 inches of the Psyker. Until the start of the next Psychic phase, add one to all wound rolls made by that unit in the fight phase. Furthermore, any wound rolls of seven plus made for that unit in the fight phase with a melee plague weapon inflicts a mortal wound on the target in addition to any other damage. Putrescent Vitality, a visible friendly death guard infantry unit within 18 inches of the Psyker. Until the start of your next psychic phase, add one to that unit's strength and toughness characteristics. And finally, Curse of the Lepar, closest visible enemy unit within 14 inches suffers a mortal wound for each roll that exceeds its toughness characteristic. Harsh, right, okay. More powers of contagion examples. Uh, so that shows, sorry, powers of contagion. So these are examples. So it shows blades of putrefaction and putrescent vitality. And then we've got a mission. Reach the evac point, Barakius. The battle for Corvon II has already cost many lives. With the mounting casualties, the ultramarine's apothecary has been hard pressed to complete his duties, harvesting the gene seed of the fallen so that it may be returned to McCrag. Okay, so that is good. So what have we got? What does that mean? Precious cargo. The ultramarines, the ultramarines must bypass the Death Guard lines in order to reach the drop site and ensure their gene seed cargo makes it to the back of the makes it back to the fleet. The Death Guard are expecting such an attempt and are prepared to push forward. They seek to intercept and steal the precious material for themselves. So what have we got? Death Guard deploy in this large area here, within six inches of the back of the board. And then there's a small deployment zone for Alt for Space Marine. So Death Guard Army is five Plague Marines, 12, Plox, 12 Pox Walkers, Lord Felthius, a Malignant Plague Caster, and the Foul Blightspawn. And the Space Marines are three Hellbasters, five Intercessors, three Aggressors, the Chaplain, the Apothecary, and the Librarian. Deployment are obviously death, that's the Death Guard. Space Marine player does not deploy any units. Space Marine player takes the first turn. 
Space Marine player moves their units into play from the board edge at the start of the first turn. Victory conditions are both armies gain one victory point for each enemy unit eliminated. The Death Guard player gains three victory points for eliminating the Apothecary. If the Apothecary leaves the board, the Space Marine gains three victory points. Game lasts for five battle rounds. Right, okay, so the Apothecary, basically, to get those three points, they have to enter the battlefield here and exit there. So the, so the Death Guard's going to have to get in pretty quick to stop him from moving through. So that's good. And then looking ahead, next week we've got some more, um, some more terrain. This, I think with issue 37, that's probably going to be the last of the terrain in the, the, the kind of 20 issue cycle. So the first 20 issues, I think, was the Battle of Ultramar, I believe. And then from 20 to 40, I think, is the Battle of Corvon 2. And then we've probably got something new coming up for around about issue 40. So that's it. So I think these are Riser Ruins. I think that's the name of them of that terrain. So we've had this one before, so that's the second one. And then the following week, we get a Plague Guard Surgeon, um, which looks pretty good. And, ah, yes, we get a new battle map, Mechanicus Zone. So, yeah, so... Looks like we're coming towards the end of our Battle of Corvon 2 stuff and we're moving on to Mechanicus Zone. So that's good. So, one last thing. Yes, competition. This week's competition winner is Grant Broadhurst. So Grant, all you need to do to get your copy of the Chaplin, you drop me an email. So that's mike underscore foyer underscore email at yahoo.com. So drop me an email there and I'll get this sent out to you, mate. And if you want to be in with a chance of winning this issue, along with any future issues, all you need to do is subscribe, drop a comment on that issue, and you'll automatically be part of this prize draw. So thanks very much for watching, guys. Much appreciated. If you enjoyed it, like and subscribe. If you didn't, let me know why, and I'll catch you later.